Fluorocarbon is used in various applications, such as refrigerants in air conditioners and refrigerators or freezers, insulation materials for buildings, and spray propellants. Fluorocarbon is a compound containing fluorine and chlorine. Representative types include CFC, chlorofluorocarbon, HCFC, hydrochlorofluorocarbon, and HFC, hydrofluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon has been widely used because it is low cost and easy to handle for low toxicity and chemical stability. But there are two negative effects on the global environment. One is to destroy the ozone layer. The ozone layer, located in the stratosphere, absorbs harmful ultraviolet rays and protects creatures on the Earth. However, when fluorocarbon is released into the atmosphere, it destroys the ozone layer. In the Antarctic region, a hole in the ozone layer was found and it has expanded since the 1980s. There is no speculative expansion tendency at this point, and it is expected that the ozone layer will recover to its original state at the end of this century. It, however, is still in a serious situation. We need to take countermeasures continuously. Impact on global warming is another concern. Greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, are well known to be a cause of global warming. The greenhouse effect of fluorocarbon is hundreds to 10,000 times greater than the effect of carbon dioxide. In addition to suppressing fluorocarbon emissions, it is important to replace with non-fluorocarbon or a substance of low global warming effect. Protecting the global environment is a challenge the whole world must work on. In 1987, the Montreal Protocol was adopted, reducing the production and consumption of ozone-depleting substances, including fluorocarbon, was gradually restricted. For example, the production and consumption of CFC was discontinued in developed countries by 1996. Developing countries did the same by 2010. Production of HCFC will be abolished by 2020 in developed countries and by 2030 in developing countries. As the result of these efforts, HFC, which is fluorocarbon without ozone depletion effect, became widely used as an alternative to CFC and HCFC. However, HFC has a high greenhouse effect. From the viewpoint of measures against global warming, it became necessary to suppress emissions into the atmosphere. Therefore, adding HFC to the reduction target of the Montreal Protocol was discussed internationally, and an agreement was reached in Kigali in Rwanda in October 2016. Developed countries are required to reduce 85% of HFC by 2036, and developing countries 80% by 2045 or 85% by 2047. As Japan's fluorocarbon management, the production of ozone-depleting substances is regulated based on the ozone layer protection law. There are some regulations on fluorocarbon management when disposing of equipment using fluorocarbons. For household air conditioners, refrigerators, freezers, washing and drying machines, there is a home appliance recycling law. Disposal of automobile air conditioners is regulated under the end-of-life vehicles recycling law. For commercial refrigerators and freezers and air conditioning equipment, there is a fluorocarbon emission control law. These regulations for each type of equipment mandate measures such as the appropriate recovery of fluorocarbon in order to prevent the release of fluorocarbon into the atmosphere. Furthermore, in the fluorocarbon emission control law, in order to implement comprehensive measures over the entire life cycle from manufacturing to disposal of fluorocarbons, every stakeholder is required to take measures. 
The producers are required to reduce the production amount of fluorocarbon by promoting the conversion to alternative substances and recycling of fluorocarbon. Manufacturers of fluorocarbon-contained products designated by the national government are required to convert to non-fluorocarbon products or the products with low global warming effect. Users of commercial refrigerators, freezers, and air conditioning equipment using fluorocarbon are required to maintain a practice of inspection of equipment and its report, consignment of appropriate filling or recovery of fluorocarbon, report of fluorocarbon leakage to the related ministries when leakage exceeds a certain amount. Approved fluorocarbon filling and recovery operators are required to fill and recover it in accordance with national criteria and regulations. If not recycling the recovered fluorocarbon by themselves, it is required to deliver the fluorocarbon to a recycling or destruction operator. Approved fluorocarbon destruction or recycling operators are required to recycle and destruct it in accordance with national criteria and regulations. Up to this point, we have briefly introduced the whole picture of the fluorocarbon emission control law. Now we would like to provide further information on the efforts necessary for stakeholders. First of all, let's see users of commercial refrigerators, freezers, and air conditioning equipment. Users are expected to make efforts to reduce the leakage when operating equipment using fluorocarbon. Let's see how they inspect. First, simple inspection. Users are required to check the equipment at least once every three months. For example, in the case of a refrigerated display cabinet at the supermarket, users should check if the temperature is within the proper range. Also, check if there is frost on the heat exchanger, oil bleeding, or other defects. Outdoor units should be checked in the same manner. In addition to simple inspection, Periodic inspection by experts is required for equipment with higher output than the specific grade. Basically, this is usually done at least once a year or once every three years, depending on kinds or grades of the equipment. During the periodic inspection, experts check if there is a refrigerant fluorocarbon leakage. Main causes of leakage of fluorocarbon are poor maintenance or deterioration of equipment. Discovering and dealing with the abnormality of equipment at an early stage can help the equipment operate at its full capacity, as well as saving energy. If leakage of fluorocarbon is detected, repairs must be made as soon as possible. Now, let's move on to filling and recovery operators' efforts. When repairing, maintaining, or disposing of equipment, they may fill or recover fluorocarbon. This process must be done by a professional operator who is registered to prefectural authorities. The standards regarding filling and recovery, such as confirmation of leak condition of refrigerant before filling, prohibition of filling until repair, suction until the pressure of the refrigerant recovery port falls below a predetermined pressure, are established. The operators must follow them during filling and recovery. Also, in order to properly process recovered fluorocarbon, it's necessary for the filling and recovery operators to deliver it to the destruction operators who can dispose the fluorocarbon safely or to recycling operators who can convert the fluorocarbon to a condition for reuse. These operators are approved by the national government. Let's see the destruction or recycling operator's efforts. First, we will talk about the destruction operators. 
Fluorocarbon is a very stable substance. Effluent gas generated during the decomposition process must be destructed using appropriate methods. One of these methods involves a reaction using special equipment to destruct fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is decomposed after reacting with air and steam. Also, there is a destruction method to burn fluorocarbon mixed with garbage. This method, burning the recovered fluorocarbon in a waste incinerator, is a safe and steady method. The recycling operators handle recovered fluorocarbon and make it into a usable state. This is the distillation purification method. Impurities are removed efficiently by transforming fluorocarbons back and forth between gas and liquid. The products will be shipped after confirming that it is high quality fluorocarbon. In recent years, the shift of non-fluorocarbon equipment and refrigerants with low greenhouse effect has accelerated. For users, this shift is important to replace with such equipment to minimize the fluorocarbon-related impact on the ozone layer and global warming. For example, in refrigerated display cabinet displaying foods at supermarkets and convenience stores, instead of fluorocarbon, Energy-saving equipment uses natural refrigerants that are available in nature. Additionally, greater energy saving compared with conventional equipment. Also, energy-saving equipment with natural refrigerants has been introduced to the refrigerated food warehouse. In this way, new technologies supporting the future are spreading. There are many things that we can do to protect the ozone layer and prevent global warming. Regular inspection and maintenance of equipment that uses fluorocarbon. Recover and hand over fluorocarbon appropriately when disposing of equipment using fluorocarbon. Also choosing non-fluorocarbon products. To keep the earth safe and clean for future generations.